in the last video, we just overviewed the key files that are involved with users and groups and identifying who belongs to what group, stuff like that. You'll need to have a lock on those. Uh, let's add, let's give a user pseudo privileges. We can do that in a couple of different ways. So um, I already added the user Jeff. I'm going to do an SU, which stands for switched user. I'm going to SU Jeff. And so now I'm the Jeff user. You'll notice it did not prompt me for a password. That's because I came from root. I was already had already done my pseudo SU. And so let's as Jeff do a pseudo SU. And it'll say, okay, what's the pseudo password? Now, here's the password I gave Jeff when I created the user. It's gonna say, sorry, Jeff isn't in the pseudo or its file. This incident will be reported. It was logged probably uh, inside of auth.log or something like that, which we'll look at later on. So let's add Jeff to the pseudo or group and let's give Jeff that pseudo power. And so I'm gonna go back, exit, and I'm gonna drop back to root by typing exit. We're going to pico a file called Etsy sudoers. And we can come down here anywhere uh, in the file, really, and we can put the, the user's name. And then I'm going to hit a tab, and it'll come right under here. All equals all, like this, and then the word all again. Essentially, you know, in this file, um, especially like in Cyber Patriot competition, you want to pay attention to who may have Sudor's position, uh, Sudor's permission on this system because this person then can execute that pseudo executable, which runs as root and can basically access just about anything on the system, right? So I'm going to save that and let's do our SU Jeff. Now that I do a pseudo SU, if I type in Jeff's password, you can see that Jeff now has the ability to become root. If you're in my class as well, you'll have access uh, to this Linux command examples add group. And we can do all of these hyphen hyphen commands. For example, no create home or in group. Uh, we can make sure that user is a part of a certain group as we create the user instead of going in and editing some of those files. Uh, we can create a system user, which doesn't add it to any group, I think. Um, and we can specify what we want that user's home directory to be. And so we, we can give it, uh, we can identify exactly what the user ID and the group ID will be when we create that user instead of having the system automatically assign it. We saw user IDs of 1004, 1005. We can specify a specific one when we create that user. So for example, I could do add user my user hyphen hyphen no create home. And I'll give it the password. One, two, three, four, five. And if I pico Etsy password, we'll see that it created my user the way it normally would have. And it even says that this user's home directory is my user here. And it's got a shell that it can utilize. But if I do an LS here inside of home, you can see that this user doesn't have a home directory. And if I do an SU my user, um, if I were to CD and do the squiggly line, which is the user's home, it'll tell you that that doesn't exist. And as I CD around the system, you can see that the color coding is all gone because we don't have any um, of the files in the user's home directory that specifies all of this color coding and we don't get a lot of that assistance um, because this user doesn't have a home directory and a lot of key files are missing for the user experience here. So I'm going to go ahead because I don't want to keep that my user and I'm going to utilize user delete my user and that is how you would delete a user. Another tip uh, we can utilize is the ID command. If we run ID and then a username after that, we'll get all the information about what is the group's user ID, um, what is this group ID, and what groups is this user a part of. That ID command can be pretty helpful if you're just trying to verify a user and figure out where 
that particular user sort of fits in terms of users and groups. Let's talk about adding a user to group and then removing a user from groups. Um, if you're, for example, competing in Cyber Patriot, you'll have to do some of that. Uh, the easier way to do it, of course, is just open Etsy group and uh, change it from there. But we can do it from the command line using user mod hyphen A, which is append hyphen G is group. And let's say the first thing we put is the group name. And the second thing we'll put is the username. So in this case, we're going to add the user Jeff to the CD-ROM group. And if I ID Jeff now, we can see that he's a member of the CD-ROM group and he's a member of the group's Jeff. If I cat Etsy group and I use the pipe command, pass it to grep CD-ROM just to show the line that contains CD-ROM and Etsy group we can see that Jeff has been added to the CD-ROM group. And so there isn't a user mod delete command. What you do is you just set the primary group of the user. So in order to remove him, you would do user mod and then just hyphen G. Here are the groups I want Jeff to be in, right? And I'll say I want Jeff, the group Jeff, user Jeff. We're gonna take that user Jeff, we're gonna stick him back in that Jeff group without any other affiliation. And if I ID Jeff now, you can see that he is just a part of that Jeff group. And if I run that cat Etsy group and I just look at the CD-ROM line, you can see that he has been removed there as well. And I'll leave it at that with this video. Um, in the next video, we'll move on and we'll take a look at some more functionality here.